Hey and welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news linked towards the singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. And this is High 45. For welcome. Another week in February. Yeah. Another week in February. Another week in February. There's actually quite a few, surprisingly. Epic stories today. Yeah, my god, the amount epic, of stuff. Epic stories. Um, so what's your, what's uh, your two? Uh, Khan Academy, kicking ass. Hells, yeah. Those guys have got some awesome stuff out. They're, yeah. They're the bomb. Awesome stuff. Well, I've got an awesome one too. Um, may, this video made by Corning, and we'll try something a little bit different with them. We'll just talk over their that video. That doesn't describe what it is at all. Yeah, I know. It's by <laughs> Corning. You have to look forward. It's the future of glass. A secret. Uh, Jeopardy, <laughs> the IBM good. challenge. Sweet. And uh, then uh, we've got the world's total CPU power is now apparently the same as a human brain. But we'll see. Talk about that a bit. I agree. Yeah, cool. We're going to start off. And oh, then our singularity topic oh, yeah. is we're going to speak about Kurzweil. And actually, he had a few articles in Time this the week. Time magazine, yeah. Yeah, and just uh, the state of the singularity. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. <laughs> state, state of, of the, the singularity. singularity. Yeah, why not? Like state of the nation. Yeah, rather than our singularity topic, state of the singularity, and we'll have a <laughs> singularity. It could work well. <laughs> I like nice. it. Um, should you lead? Yep. Yes. Should we wait for the train to pass? Yeah, bloody trains. There has been a lot this week though, like actually looking at Kurzweil and actually having those two articles in time. <laughs> the thing is, there has been a lot of trains this week. Ah, uh, well, there has been a few. Yeah, quite a few. But, but with Kurzweil being in time, it's been really cool. Because yeah. a lot of discussions all around the web about the singularity and about what people have been thinking. And I've kind of noticed that the hive mind has kind of changed a little bit and they're more really? defending Kurzweil and actually saying, hey, this is happening. Well, hell it's yeah. about half to nice. half. Like, which is kind of cool, like usually it's like, oh, your Kurzweil's so wrong and stuff, but now people are saying, hey, you know what, the, he's actually got a lot of predictions and stuff. So it is cool. Why, why do you think that is? Do you think they've just kind of adopted his ideas now? Well, he is a what? little bit extreme. Like, I mean, in one of the, the time ones they actually have is one of the predictions he wants yeah, to bring, bring back, back his dead. dead father. That's, yeah, because his dad died. Yeah, and it's, that's like, not, not going to happen. Dude. No, it'll be like an identical twin of him will be born again. You can't replicate the experiences. Yeah. You, you just can't. You, can't. you won't be able to replicate the connectomes. No. The neural pathways and stuff. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Ah, that's it. Anyway, we'll speak more about that as we get to it. But, uh... Yep. Okay, cool. Ah, uh, Singularity Hub article. The Khan Academy. You've all heard of the Khan Academy before. You, I'm sure you have. If you haven't, you should go to thekhanacademy.org and check it out and sign up and, you know, learn maths. Yeah. Because you all suck at maths. It's true. I looked. Your mums were talking to me. Particularly women. Apparently, I hear they suck at maths. I'm just... Just saying. So... <laughs> Good start, good start. <laughs> there was another joke on top of that, but I won't go there. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, this is a cool video. Let me put the beer down before I break something. Um, <laughs> this is a cool video of what they're actually doing now with their software. It's not just videos anymore, which is amazing, because yeah, you know, yeah. he started off just with videos teaching people how to do basic maths and yeah. physics and all that sort of there stuff. There were just tons of like little videos about how to teach any topic, actually yeah. teaching you that way. And yeah. that was the whole site. And now he's got uh, funding from Google and a whole bunch of donations yeah, from other people. Yeah, he's got a lot of money now. Yeah, the guy is kicking ass. And, uh, come on, look at this. Yeah. Look at that mug. Oh, look. Salman Khan is the man. Yeah, he, he, look, he looks pretty awesome. Seems upstream. <laughs> <laughs> and so this software now that they've built that like, goes along with the, the videos is kind of like a... It's kind of like a first stage of RPG gaming for education. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard everyone's been talking about education should be level up systems with badges and rewards. Oh my god, yes. Like, get rid of the whole, like, you know, B's, C's, F's, A's. That's... It's, grading systems are stupid. They... Yeah. They give no incentive to learn at all. And they just yeah. discourage people who don't get good grades to never ever want to learn anything ever in their life. Yeah. They're like, oh no, I failed at this. I suck at maths because I keep on getting an F. Yeah. Oh, I keep on getting a D that, oh, well, I'm no good at maths then. Fuck that. Yeah, no, it should be you never get experience. Yeah, yeah, you work your way up. So this does that. It, it basically, it, uh, when you first load it up, it has an entire kind of mind map of all the different levels and stages of the, the courses oh, you want to do. Oh, yeah. So you, you start at the first one and you just work that out. Um, apparently, it just comes up with a few like basics. So the first thing is like, you know, what's four plus seven or whatever. It, it doesn't... <laughs> I should yes. probably look, yeah. Well, apparently what it does, it uh, does like a computer-generated thing, so they're all random. Right. Um, but if you get 10 in a row right, then you get them to the next level. Also, this is actual exercises as well. I thought yeah, it, it might just be that once no, you finish no, no. watching the video, you get a tick. No, no, no. It's exercises. Actual exercises. It's... Oh, yes! It's, I am doing this! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exercises with videos attached. So the videos are oh, secondary. The exercise The exercises are now primary, and that's the thing you got to do. That's fantastic. I'm going to start um, learning math. So chemistry. Chemistry I was never very good at. I'm going to do chemistry. Or like physics. I want to do physics. Like physics? That's advanced good. quantum mechanics and stuff. Does he oh, do that yeah. You, you, yeah, you probably do an introduction to advanced quantum physics. Yeah, you know, nice and easy. Cool. Get the equations up there. Yeah. 
They should have X prizes for like kids, <laughs> like whoever, who's who's the youngest person that can actually get through quantum mechanics and mm. actually solve it all or something like that. Anyway, this is pretty cool. Um, and what the he's also doing is they're doing trials with uh, different schools already. And teachers can actually go into the back end and access all the analytics oh, on their right. students. So they can see what students did, um, you know, what homework they did, what exercises they did, how long it took them, how well they went, all that stuff. Plus, That's of course, incredible. students actually get an accurate reading of how they've progressed through yeah. all this, the courses. It's, it's the greatest teaching tool ever. I mean, they can actually just work for and work through in their own way, get level up, like, you know, get badges, get yeah. experience. The teacher it's, can help them and actually say, oh, look, you have done that. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, you could go through so much this, math so quickly. This is where, like, Khan might not be the one that actually dominates the education platform, but this is where it's going. Mm. If you can look at what these guys are doing and work out what to do better, do it better, then, you know. There, there is another um, really fantastic thing I discovered recently. They might have mentioned it in here because I know I'm going to pronounce it wrong. There it is at the bottom. Mathletics. Mathletics was really interesting, actually. I went and checked it out. Um, unfortunately, you have to pay to actually use it, but it's the same thing where you actually, it combines everyone together all around the world and they all start just working on problems. And they compete against, they each, compete other. against each other. They yeah. compete against each other to get like on a leaderboard and it's yeah. um, only K right. through 12 maths, so it's not, you know, not advanced stuff, yeah, nothing we'd really be interested in, yeah. but it's still really cool. Awesome. Uh, well, this is a, a discussion I was having uh, last night with the housemate of ours about the future of education and I was saying that um, wouldn't it be amazing if education which is the way it's kind of going now, if, mm -hmm. if people basically created uh, courses and knowledge for each other yeah. and ways of teaching uh, knowledge and stuff. Because, I mean, knowledge is all out there. The, the big thing with education is how do you teach it? How so do you that, convey it? Yeah, how do you convey it so that, and teach it so that someone will actually understand it? Yeah. And that, that's different for each individual. Yeah. Um, it'd be great if people started use like the internet now, where you just basically, you put down an idea, someone grabs that, remixes it, adds, adds their own thing to it, and then just... Well, see, that's there, yeah. what Khan does that's really well. Like he's a really good teacher. He explains it in a basic term, but that won't work for everyone. He won't be the greatest teacher for different topics. Yeah. If Khan Academy could actually allow other people to actually do their take on it, especially yeah. in a way of say other kids could actually help other kids speak. Like you know, what's that little annoying shit on YouTube, Fred? <laughs> Fred, you know, <laughs> a little annoying shit on YouTube. Yeah, you know, he's got millions of views. He's getting a movie deal. The little cunt. <laughs> <laughs> he's a douche. Just because he's younger than me and he's done all this amazing stuff, but he can relate to like, you know, kids his age and stuff. Yeah. Whereas I think, you know, kids actually like, you know, teaching other kids, spending 10 minutes to explain a, a concept that's hard to grasp to other kids, yeah, then yeah. if they get lots of views and then they get some stuff that way, some points, some experience, make some extra badges on there. Like, fantastic teacher. Yeah. Well, there? there's been studies that show that actually kids teaching each other is far better, far better than, than a, teacher. A, a teacher teaching yeah. kids. So but it's why the not, group that learns. Why yeah. not do that? Why not? Yeah. But Khan might open it up to that afterwards. I mean, it's yeah. tricky. It's tricky to be able to do it because you want a level of quality and there's going to be a yeah. lot of shit out there. Well, the biggest thing like is... Fred. The biggest hurdle is just the education institutions, basically. Oh, yeah. Their, their, their culture and their sort of... The way they operate is holding They're, things back. They're becoming less and less, I think. that More kids will be just learning online. That, I, 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 that was yeah. mainly me, like, learning in forums, learning in all that other stuff. And then it was just... You just went to school because you had to. But yeah. most of my learning was done outside of school. Yeah. I think the same. It's, I, I found school just to be rope learning. It's just like yeah, that's it. It's just, they they tell you everything you need to know, and then you just regurgitate it. Yeah. And then everyone's class was amazed. Like, wow, you went so well on that, that test. Like, you you went so amazing. Why are you being? I'm like, well, they taught it to us. They said specifically what we what was I going to be on there. That I then yeah. just, <laughs> It's like it wasn't hard, guys. You guys, are, you know this. Yeah. Well, that's surrounded it. by idiots. <laughs> <laughs> well, this will be the the way. Sorry, Maria. Really nice, sorry, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. Oh well. Shall we go into the next one? We've spoken about that for a while, but that is awesome. Like, yeah. I'm going to jump into that, going to learn me some chemistry. Yeah, so Maybe it's in English. They've done a redesign of the site too. It looks not too bad now. Oh, yeah. I think their landing page needs a bit of effort, but it's, it's a bit of green and flowery and yeah. Yep. Anyway, green means action. Ah, learn Yay. some stuff, kids. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Uh, well, I'll get on to my one now. Well, no, let's go into the corning video. I think okay. a corning video would be a good one to do. We're just going to play it? Ah, uh, yeah, well, just before we play, we'll just explain what we'll do. Uh, yeah, well, there's this fantastic, fantastic five-minute video about the future household and uh, how it'll all yeah. work. So what we'll do is we'll play the video and we'll just speak in a corner and there'll be no... It's just got crappy music playing over. It's all lovely yeah. and stuff. So you're not missing That way anything. you can see the whole video and we'll add our own discussions. Yeah, we'll just talk about it. You can hear our lovely voices in the background. Oh, it's so much nicer than the music, you know. <laughs> more relaxing. So here we go. So we're presented with... Hot chicks in bed at 7am. Yeah. 
Oh, they're married though. When does glass come into play? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. I love that. I love that. I love that so much. Actually having like the TV in there being actually something other than the TV. The obvious, you know, Android it's the alarm clock. It's the alarm clock. It's the Android platform going in there. Yeah. And then, so that'll be the Android platform. So Android there. needs a bit of work before it gets to looking like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's possible though. Like, why yeah, it's not? It's simple. It's... Yeah. Yeah, if you wallet that, I mean, that isn't too groundbreaking. That's the thing that can be done right now. Especially with, you know, this as well. This is a, some nice, awesome stuff, but so possible. Yeah. It's really the UI that's going to make or break this, like how it works. Well, plus the data in interconnectivity. Yeah, yeah, good about. point. Like we're saying that um, uh, the semantic web or some variation of that, like say everyone just releases their own APIs and they all share um, the data freely. Mm. Then you can have your fridge connected to you, your mirror connected to your toaster. Connected to everything. Your, um, have, you know, the, have that down there, actually. Just say, hey, I was watching yeah. this. Now chuck it down. Like, this is this has already happened. This is pretty cool. Yeah, it's, we've got it, this. Yeah, we, we've spoken about it before, but, I mean, it looks damn cool. Which is expensive. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you're right. Just to be able to know, hey, I was viewing this in the bedroom. Now I want to view this now. Yeah, all the, um, sorry, the, the, oh, the schedule thing. The schedule. Oh, the schedule. Yeah, yeah that is. You well. have your schedule show up. I'm like, you could have cameras actually in there, actually going there. Yeah. Like this again, this is very basic stuff, That's but it's just really incredible the way it's actually done there. The, the yeah, whole touchscreen screen fridge. fridge. I mean, we were speaking about that before. That's where we get the Android fridges or we just get the touchscreen fridges. Yeah. These phones are gay though. <laughs> it's just because it's an Apple phone. It's the exact... Uh, yeah, one. but I know, but who's going to have a glass phone? Well, why? Not? It, my phone, the and iPhone... Yeah, but why, why, does you, why does your phone need to be see-through? What's oh, the that point? It's just I'm trying to <laughs> intellectual masturbation. Yeah. But see, that's cool. Like, you know, just the interconnected going there. Like, again, this isn't that far, but it just looks so incredible. Yeah. So amazing. And I'm very excited. I love the car. The, oh, yeah. It, the, blue, <laughs> uh, the blue stripe just gets me. Yeah. But we're saying, um, uh, if you look at the Model S, Tesla Model S, their entire console in the middle is just a giant touchscreen. Yeah. So it's pretty much already here, it's just they've extended it across the dashboard, which is just like, yeah. you know, a bigger touchscreen. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. And then, you know, actually, well, th this is already here, like the car looks spectacular. I mean, the really amazing thing is what you were talking about before, the data connectivity between. And that's, that's cool. I think that could be done. Ah, yeah, it's just expensive. Differently, yeah, I don't think it'll be done with that glass. Way, yeah. yeah. But see, it popped up on Obvious, her dashboard. Yeah. So, I mean, why not? This I disagree with quite a bit, like, you know, just the graffiti and all of that. It's more the societal problems associated with it. Oh, you just have, uh, you know, cameras and laser guns. Yeah. Well, I mean, they do have <laughs> touchscreen things in public, like, you know, kiosks and stuff already around yeah. everywhere. Um, just maybe not bus stations. I think that's why, because, you know, most bus stations I see full of graffiti. Yeah. And it's just the phone again. That's pretty cool. Well, maybe so maybe getting graffiti -less glass. Well, they were saying all this glass is sponge proof. Like if you'd looked at uh, looked okay. at the bottom and stuff, I think when I watched it the other time. This is cool. I, I don't know why people don't do this now. Like uh, collaborative work. Like yeah, with just simple basic like a picture, a video of the person with the time across where they're in, yeah. where they're at. You know, just how it's all together. So New York, maybe London. It's... Well, again, it's all just the work. It just needs to get cheap enough to have these screens everywhere. To have this is like Microsoft Surface really, just here, and then with yeah. a fancy UI. So we've got that awesome, 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 you know, thing yeah. at the bottom, and then the massive screen. There's like no technology here that's No, it's just getting work. them all to yeah. work together. And when they do it, oh, it's incredible. Like just even bringing that there, like, th th this is blowing me away, I just like, watching it again. I feel like we're a sports commentator or something. Yeah, <laughs> kind of are a bit here. <laughs> now we go. She's See, running up the field. These, that's just projectors. It's not yeah. going to be full on displays. No. Nah, but it's... Hey, Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> but again, actually, like getting them, getting them together, actually just allowing the data to transfer between. What they should do is transfer her face onto the other one, but really subtly. Yeah. Because that way you associate with the person. Yeah. And then it shows, oh, this person's far hotter than I am. I'm going to buy their dresses and stuff. I do like this UI, how they actually go that there. Actually, just basic, basic spinning. things saying, yeah, well, the spinning and before saying, what type of dress are you looking for in a store? And then they just project it up there. Yeah. Maybe with your face on there. This as well, this is, uh, this is coming up. The more of the uh, flexible, flexible screens surface, and stuff. Surface. I'm not sure if it'll be used a lot in this regard. Like, why not just use a, a normal screen? Why not just have that table already built in? Yeah, it? That's <laughs> it. I mean, I guess that's a way for the stuff if it isn't a table to actually just chuck it. Maybe down it's there. like a pre-screen table or something. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> and we're back at home. We got yeah. the popcorn. So what does the TV look like? I don't remember the TV. Oh, it's a 3D TV. It's just a normal TV. It's just wall size. It comes out and it's 3D. Oh, wow. Except I don't think 3D is ever gonna do that. Yeah. Again, he's just a Kindle. <laughs> yeah, flexible Kindle. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, yeah, it's right. It's right about you're right about 3D TV. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not. It's, I don't. I don't see how without any kind of implant or glasses it can ever pop out that much. Yeah. Just as you're viewing it, like it'll pop out a bit based if you know if you're in a certain location, but I don't see how it's. Yeah. No. Maybe it will. And here's yeah. the end from Corning. So yeah. Absolutely fantastic video. Totally blew me away when first saw it. Very awesome. Maybe you should have like, you know, the music lightly in the background. Okay. <laughs> okay. It feels like you're floating. Just for you guys, we'll put the music lightly in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a, yeah, a damn good video. Just about on connectivity. I think we're actually speaking about it right now. It Really the, the massive problem at the moment for all of this is allowing information to be transferred seamlessly between screens. Yeah. That's the big issue at the moment. Well, it's like, even now, like, I, it'd be awesome if I could just drag this straight to your computer. Yeah, just say, hey, connect like and that. And yet, you can't. It's really difficult. I've got to like the send it through an email or on Facebook or through Messenger yeah, or through you've got Skype. Or... You've got to start syncing. Even with your phone that works specifically with your computer, you're like you yeah. make it work together, you've still got, you can't just like, you know, just drag and drop across. You still need to open up an app and then do these other things, wait for it to but load. It's almost like they need context awareness. Like these, mm. these computers need to recognize each other, that they're right yeah. next to each other and hey, or oh, maybe we should form a sync because maybe they might want to transfer yeah, stuff. Yeah, just do an automatic sync. Something like that. Well, I'd, see, that could be very possible in some of the new so, um, OS's like and stuff. Drag this across so you yeah. can... Yeah. Let's see, that should work with um, w uh, Windows new OS that's coming out. Like, uh, it's not Azure, it's one of the other ones. The, the cloud-based one. Well, yeah, I guess. I think they're just calling it Windows 8, aren't they? Yeah, I'm not sure. But one of the cloud ones, like, that would be a, an absolutely massive killer app. I mean, if Windows could yeah. crack that, oh my god, that yeah. would make <laughs> the Windows 7 phone worth buying. Yeah. I'll tell you what. But, uh, yeah, what anyway, let us know what you think about um, us actually talking over the video going now. Hopefully it wasn't too horrendous. <laughs> Let us know. Uh, <laughs> the, sp the sporting commentary. Yeah. Sporting commentary. Oh, we can get on to the next one. Um, is it just Jeopardy? Um, yeah, Jeopardy. Is this the last one? Or That's the last one. Okay. Yeah, then we go into Coastwell. Um, we've talked about Jeopardy before. They did, like, a trial challenge. This is IBM's kind of uh, intelligent supercomputer that can play uh, Jeopardy. Called and, Watson. And kick ass. Yeah, Watson. <laughs> But they just actually had their first, um, it, I think that, I think they have two, I think it's, this was round one, I think they have two rounds. Mm -hmm. um, and the video was actually really cool. Um, I'm going to spoil it now, so if you don't want me to spoil it, pause this and go watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so, um, wait, you're still here? No, okay. Um, so it was really amazing, like this is, this is a two-part video, because I believe this person split up. But in the first half, it was freaking amazing. The Watson was actually absolutely kicking ass. Like, it was like, I think it was like $5,400 up, and everyone else was about four, three, two hundred dollars $200 each. Like, I don't remember. They were just getting absolutely owned. Yeah. But then, like, towards the end, Watson started getting questions wrong, because he's a dickhead. But and they ended up tying at five thousand apiece at the very end. So the human with was tied with just the machine. Yeah, with Watson <laughs> and this other this other dude. Oh um, man! But Watson did things like um, there was a question asked, and one of the contestants, the human contestant, said, "Oh, nineteen twenties, or what is nineteen twenties, or whatever." And that was wrong. And then yeah, when you get it wrong, you hand them to the next person, I guess. I, I don't know, Jeopardy. Um, and then Watson said. What is 1920s? <laughs> he like, and the guy was like, uh, I guess this guy, the other person just said that. Right. <laughs> Silly Watson. Stupid Watson. But still. But the weird thing that um, we mentioned before, we talked about before is like. Before this, yeah. Um, I thought it was just all natural language processing. Like I thought it was, yeah. he actually, the, the computer actually has a microphone and listens to what the, the presenter is saying, That's the a question, question, and then interprets it and then runs it. But apparently they were sending it text files at the exact same time mm. that everyone else was, that it was being said. Yeah, I, I heard that too. It's, and it seems that not really as impressive, actually. Yeah, that doesn't that. seem as impressive at all. Like, sure enough, like, interpreting, you know, text files and actually doing all the... That's still great. The algorithm-based... Probabilistic, uh, yeah. you know, notioning on it. But it should have been all NLP, like... Yeah. Well, see, I, I was curious as a why, why didn't they just have the video camera, like, read off the screen going there? The, that's still, like, yeah, you know... Because then it's still the human... The, the Ro Watson's still actually playing as a human. He's not getting any special yeah, treatment. That's it. Files. Yeah, because that's it. That's getting a little bit of special treatment. And I don't want to underscore, like, their, their, what they've done. Like, it's their achievement is just incredible. But it just yeah. doesn't feel as right. Like, that does feel like a little bit of cheating. Yeah, given it in digital form, is like, you know, injecting, you know, neural activity into the human brain and then understanding yeah. it exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's nice. like, there has to be, we have so much lag time in the communication process that yeah. it should have to get lag time as well. Indeed, but still, apart from that, like, this is just yeah. incredible. Like, it's, it's shown that, like, 
the AI is pretty much here, but you know, we've got to start moving back because what's yeah. this, an AI? Like, what are you talking about? It's not even close <laughs> to AI. Can't well, pass the tuned. He's limited. He can only do Jeopardy, Jeopardy, that's all. Yeah. And I guess basic questioning stuff. Yeah. Let's see, that's it. It's, it's, it's just great. every question he'll answer into like a what if. Yeah. Or what <laughs> well, is, yeah. What is see, this? If that can work, then you can just put it on your phone, like, you know, connect to a server farm or stuff, you know, use the web and it will just answer any question you've got there. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll guarantee you that this will, that will that a version of that software or something similar will be online as a website. Yeah. Well, I don't know why they don't do it online. Like, they should run them simultaneously. Hmm. One that learns online in a real time simulation, like, based off thousands and thousands of people questioning it. Yeah. And well, with a feedback mechanism. And then the one that's completely separate from online. They, they could move their yeah. research onto that afterwards. I mean, like, they're versing Jeopardy's champions that, I mean, yeah, the guy's actually building it. Once they've done that, move yeah. online, they've already got an immediate, like, you know, user base. Because so they're like, oh, this is Jeopardy. This is Watson. Yeah. That, that'd be cool. But I think from IBM's perspective, they're thinking of turning this into a commercial product. Right. And so they want to own every yes. single piece of intellectual property because they're a fucking corporation. A and fucking corporation. They're, I mean, they're the most evil of them all. Well, cool. like if you or I were doing this and we were running Ot Watson and we were running IBM, we'd be like, dude, just just put it all online, just make it completely free. We'll turn it into like yeah. something that's ten times better than what it is yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But then they're all like, no, we have to make money from this because we put so much R and D effort into it and so much. It could be so much greater. Like you know, still have some ads there. Like I mean, they're asking questions into Watson. So whatever you reply, what Watson replies, you can actually have ads specifically yeah. through there. So there's a lot of money to be made there. Anyway, the anyway well, like we can't make predictions with what they'll do. Like maybe they will yeah. be smart. They could, hopefully. Maybe. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah. Let's get into the year the man becomes immortal. And it's weird. They actually picked. Oh, you do you remember all this? I remember a little bit. Okay, so I don't need to. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Singularity. I'm gonna fix up the camera because I moved it. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, yeah, this week has uh, been, as we were mentioning at the beginning, uh, it's been kind of fantastic in regards to the singularity and Kurzweil is, uh, especially, because that time actually did this massive article, massive six page article about Kurzweil and that actually used a term like you singularitarian. I still find it hard to yeah, pronounce that. Term. And all of, yeah, well, that's it, but all the other things there. But it was a remarkably uh, flattering article. It was actually really flattering, eh? Flattering, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was remarkably positive, maybe that's a better word to use, okay. about it all, actually saying it. There was a fantastic phrase that I can't quite remember. Did have it there, but alas. Maybe, maybe it's because <laughs> they haven't had like any uh, Terminator movies lately. It could be. That, that was mentioned briefly, but not too much. You know that's the, the issue with like West and East. Like West sees all the technology and robots as like these overtaking, you know, overpowering things. Yeah. And the East sees robots as like their saviors. Yeah. It could be. Just look at the cartoons like Astro Boy versus Terminator. Yeah, true. Yeah. But well, anyway, about the whole of, yeah, with all of that actually going there, like the, it's great that it's actually getting out there in the mainstream. Yeah. That the, the phrase of like brutally, brutally um, summarized was uh, pretty much that the future is kind of like a weather forecast. Like we, we don't know specifically what's going to happen, but yeah. we're trying to make as educated guess as possible. Yeah. And a lot of this out there, like, you know, future cyborgs and AIs running a mark and the whole world connected in this weird sort of hive mind. Yeah. It sounds really bizarre, but it's uh, when you actually look under it like cautiously and logically step by step you can actually make him yeah well that, that's you can make he, he predicts it based on uh i guess like was it cost per uh computing yeah. cycle and stuff like that and yeah um, cost per step yeah yeah basically looks at like uh, um, the general trend with Moore's law and all that stuff is that computing power goes up exponentially not linearly so exponentially and the cost goes down the same way yeah it's and that's pretty much standard across per second yeah it's pretty much similar across every single piece of technology you can find. Yeah. Speaking of that, I did actually skip my last story, but don't worry, it was not actually that impressive. <laughs> it was uh, about the, the human brain. I'll just quickly summarize it. The human brain, uh, apparent, the Earth being the same power as the human brain, but there was a lot of flaws in it, but put up the yeah, I didn't anyway. agree with it. Nah, neither. I, th I thought it was a bit silly. But anyway. Nothing much to miss there. So, uh, but uh, anyway, let, well, let's actually speak about the singularity again. Like, what, what do you think? Let's just get back to the basics and say, has, has anything changed on your view of the singularity since we started doing this, I guess, nearly 50 episodes ago? Nearly, oh, it's only been over, yeah, really. 47, yeah. 47? Feels like more than a year. Yeah, I think it has been over. We've missed we, a few We've ones. lost so much hair since the first episode. <sighs> it's very sad. <laughs> Not because of this. I think because of starting a business. Yeah. It's been very stressful. <laughs> Indeed. Well, yeah. one of the big things, apart from the trains, you should have fixed the trains. Anyway, well, I think, I think we're still in agreement that the singularity is not going to be a point, yeah? 
Yeah, but see, that has Google. changed, I think, a little bit. Because, you know, there's the event horizon hypothesis. You know, that's like Bernard Binge and all of that, saying that yeah. there'll be such great intelligence, you'll never be able to predict anything out there because it'll be just so strange and so... Yeah. That was kind of the singularity. I guess so. In a traditional sense. Is it? I, I'm pretty certain I was what the singularity... Yeah, the singularity well, was... You should, say, you should say the thing you were saying before. It's like... The, what? There's, there's three strains of the singularity. There's, uh, there's Kurzweil's view, there's Bernard Binge's view, and there's our view. <laughs> that was what you were saying. It's, our view has been said... <laughs> A lot by a lot better people, a lot smarter people. True, but <laughs> it's more on the yeah. They're still not explaining it as well as I think they should be. <laughs> Indeed. Well, let's talk about the but three schools talk. and then like say how, how we've like adjusted our view like based on those ones, yeah. and then we can go into like what our actual one is about and stuff. Okay. So there's like the, the curse. What's curse well? Uh, curse while is pretty much the accelerating future that you can always it's an exponential, exponential growth. growth you'll be able to predict it as things go through but he's still about to get to the point where suddenly it, it's yeah. so exponential that yeah that it'll just it be absolutely off. crazy yeah and that was what Werner Vinge actually like hypothesized you know uh, so I, I agree with that just, yeah I mean because if you go exponentially you're going to get to the point where along the graph it's going to be it's going to look vertical yeah. When you're going in the graph, and at that point, somewhere between where it looks like it's you know a little bit horizontal and where it goes uh, vertical, mm. somewhere in between there, it's going to be a massive yeah yeah sort of explosion in a sense. Well, see, that's the interesting thing with exponential things as well is they just by the laws of the universe they can't continue on indefinitely. It can't unless yeah. it's the whole thing. There are going to be a long way though. You but... can go a long <laughs> way, and that that's what I wanted to bring up. Oh, excuse me, is that there is going to be an actual limit to where the exponential can go. I don't think, I think that'll be way after we've invented um, like you know, artificial intelligence and once we've actually got a global hive mind and a, a, the earth is like, you know, one big thinking machine. I think it's going to be yeah. way after that. But at least it, it won't be a perpetual uh, exponential thing. It'll actually, it'll be like an S-curve, like anything else. Yeah, but, well, that's the thing he actually pushes, S-curves. Mm, yeah. Everything's a paradigm. Like, he's like, what, Moore's law is like the fifth, I think it's the fifth paradigm of computing. Yeah. yeah uh, vacuum tubes up. and all this stuff before. And usually a paradigm starts off where it takes off really quickly, then tapers out, and everyone's like, oh my god, it's slowing down, we need to invent the and next you get another thing. One. Yeah. And then it does the next S curve. Yeah. So it's not a perfect no. exponential. And then that's all, I think, on an actual S curve itself, like because yeah. there's lots of tiny S curves like within that. Yeah. And so there's always the big one going there. We're talking about the progression of technology here. Yeah, progressive technology. <laughs> We're not just talking, graphs, man, they're like, well, oh, graphs are great, you know, you gotta love them. <laughs> <laughs> No, we'll see that. That's Information right. technology. Yeah. yeah. And so the exponential trend, you see, still see going uh, for a very good few more decades at least, yeah. very much. I mean, everyone for you know, decades upon decades been prophesizing the end of Moore's Law, but I don't see that ending yeah. too soon. What's, what's the, we should explain the, the big thing about the whole point of the singularity is that with, those, with technology progressing exponentially and those S-curves, with each paradigm, you actually you use that technology and use the power of that technology to create the next technology. Mm. That's how it. Ha that's how you get in the exponential fashion is because, I mean, when we come up with new technology, we don't just go, oh, pff, won't use that, or use the old technology to create the next technology after that. You're always like, okay, well, this, mm. I'll use the latest technology I have right now to create something incrementally better. And when that, that, that's slightly better. And then that, that's the third school, the um, intelligence explosion. We're oh, about, we actually uh, boost our own intelligence. Like at the moment, yeah. humans are the smartest things on a planet, mm. which I would debate. <laughs> uh, and then we actually use either technology or we use a genetic engineering to enhance our own enhance. intelligence. Yeah. And then that keeps on going back and forth. Well, it's like the, the internet right now is, and the computers are a cognitive enhancement yeah. of us. Even, even writing stuff down on a piece of paper, yeah. that is cognitive, cognitive enhancement. That's See, that, that's one thing that... Own. Someone else brought Thanks. up, I know it's not my original idea, but I forget yeah. who actually said it, but someone actually made the point saying that the singularity kind of began with the birth of writing. Right, yeah. Like where um, uh, stuff was, act like technology was created, pretty much. Yeah, because technology is, it's us, but it, an extension of us. Yeah, because what we're still roughly the same intelligence, because the, intelli the machines, the technology, actually makes us in smarter, because that's how you get the intelligence explosion. Yeah. You get this feedback loop just again and again and again and again and again. It's like with, without technology and without culture, we'd be in the jungles, like just yeah, living 20 year lifespans and yeah. there'd be no difference. We'd be like monkeys. Exactly. what we are, but... Technology is the only <laughs> thing that really allows us to live at this point, and yeah. which really brings up this uh, fantastic thought experiment. I've, I've said to you a few times, I'm not sure if I've said it on High 45, but it, it is a way that I do find very useful to view the world. Uh, it's, a, it's a way to kind of see technology as more alive. And uh, you, you do that yeah. by, you just remove the human from it. Like, you remove all biological stuff from 
the machine from all technology. And by technology, I mean like, you know, cement, walls, like, you know, anything around, like, you know, writing, even, you know, advanced agriculture or something. Remove the human, remove the biological form. So if you're looking at me right now, all you'd see is just this t-shirt and that's pretty much it. And then the recording here. And then just look at technology and like writing and stuff as its own thing. Yeah. And then observe the world that way and you realize that the humans actually have very little to actually do. Because it's yeah. all technology acting on other technology and we just happen to be the faucet that it operates through. Yeah. We're just the ones that kind of breed to actually produce the next set of technology. Yeah, that's it. That's all we do. Yeah. We're, we're not really... I mean, we just have to create the next race, the, or the, sorry, the next generation, and then we actually, those yeah. guys look at the technology, join a few things together, and like, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and then, and then that's a nice progression. Yeah, and that's why computers were so fantastic, yeah. was that was actually allowing technology to actually start improving itself again and again, yeah. and you know, they could just focus on that. So we've had an interesting thought. I have no way, no way to prove this, but um, how it could be interesting that the internet now could be an actual very intelligent being of some sense. It, it is. It's just, it's operating on a different level that it can't speak what is, yeah because what is intelligence no one has a definition of the no one can thing. define it I, but then you it's look at the theory. internet it is massively parallel like well, it's not power sorry it's just <laughs> it's all this activity happening everywhere and it's it, again if you remove the human from it look at what's happening online yeah. it's amazing it is progressing so incredibly fast it is the it is the fastest most exponential piece of technology we have anywhere existing yeah. today and that's why we, we want to focus on it. Yeah, that is that where is the, the growth is. That, that is, is the that is the intelligence. That's when mentioned yeah. before, like when we both laughed about saying that humans are the smartest thing on the planet. No, yeah. of course not. Intelligence, uh, technology is. Yeah. It it look at it like we don't have a definition of intelligence. Like you look it up. There's no definition. There's no definition of life. There's none of these things. All this stuff that you learn to like you know year eight science is a total lie. Yeah. <laughs> no, we have no idea what it is because you can't define it. And so, well, that's what actually happens with the internet. You remove yeah. us from it. Just remove the biological. Remove us. Stop focusing on us as the big important thing and just look at the tech just by itself yeah. and how it operates. Imagine that there's a pencil floating in the sky when stuff's written <laughs> down. Imagine keys are being pressed just randomly. Yeah. Like, imagine there's no human pressing it. The human still is. And then that's the intelligence. That's the creature. And it does. So many of his algorithms are all automated. Yeah. It's just of course it passing is. blips back and forth. It, the problem is it speaks in ones and zeros. We speak in yeah. this abstract, stupid... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, but very, very <laughs> odd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. You understand me, though. Yeah. And that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And so I guess that's where it comes down to... Yeah, well, you know, the, the concept of AI and the concept of a smarter-than-human intelligence. So what is yeah, your, right. view on, what, your view on that now? <laughs> the problem is our views are the same. Well, yeah, well, we, I, we, I'm helping it by asking know, you. Right, and, you know. <laughs> we, we need more in external influence. <laughs> um, well, it's just the idea that uh, uh, a lot of people say that we're going to actually create AI in a single kind of... Like a single organization is going to create AI that's going to be far superior than human intelligence and it's going to rule our world and we're going to be... Con like abstractly confined it in some box where it sits for all eternity and helps us solve all our world's problems. Yeah, so weird. Or the other one... Well, well, there is no other one. No, right? no, well, that one as well, but actually, like, then they go one step further, but they're getting closer, which is yeah. good. Sorry, I'm acting like a pretentious <laughs> cock, but anyway. Um, that, you know, yeah, they create... Someone creates AI in a lab, like, you know, mad scientist style, yeah. then they put that onto the internet, and because software can be copied, that software is copied all around the world and stuff. And they're like, well, at least they're thinking more with the internet there, but that's still yeah. not how it's going to happen. Like, that's yeah. just a very uh, limited way of viewing, I think. Yeah. I mean, and we're going to enhance our own intelligence through different, mm. whatever we can do with our brains, but that's obviously not going to be AI. If no. you enhance our own intelligence, you wouldn't consider us to then be AI. No. We'd be an enhanced, we'd be a cyborg, we'd be an enhanced human, yeah. but that's not AI. So that, that's one oh. thing that's going to happen. We're going to enhance our intelligence. Mm. And, you know, become smarter ourselves, but obviously not AI. But what will AI be? AI will most likely be connecting human brains together. Yeah. Creating Why? the actual hive. The hive mind. That's what intelligence is. Like, where the, the intelligent things, like, doing the stuff that can't be done at the moment. Like, yeah. you could say, oh, computers or as soon as computers we're, can replicate we're ourselves. Already, but we're already connected. We're already a hive. Yeah. Just disregard any communications technology. Right now, we're a hive right now. Yeah. I mean, you look, you, I like the example of pick up a pencil, like... How would, how would you make a pencil from scratch by yourself? Yeah, the only way you can ever get that pencil is if someone knows how to, you know, mine the graphene, someone else knows how to get the trees and actually shape them all and yeah, make the machinery to stuff. do it all, and then the transportation networks to actually... Yeah. There is... 
for any single item, there is an absolute network of knowledge that is all interconnected yeah. in a brain-like fashion. Where a brain, a global economy is a brain yeah. already. Of course it is. Yeah. Add communications technology on top of that, and interconnect our brains. You know, at a you know basic level, say yeah. with the internet and social media right now. What we're doing now, we're interconnecting our brains, are pushing out information to you. Can't you're picking it up. You're sharing these ideas out to other people. Yeah. Then go one. No, go the end game. The end game is neuron sort of, to neuron. Actual yeah. like perfect brains connecting back and forth. Like for lack of a better term, like you know the brain in a jar type thing. But yeah. everything we do is shared. Every input that we get is also shared with the machine. If that happens, and that's all that needs to happen, you will get AI. You will get the greatest super intelligence you've yeah. ever seen in the world because you'll have every every human, every person, every living thing all communicating with each other and working together. Then of course people will say, well it's only the algorithms that are doing it, but no, it's the connectivity, it's the sharing. But the funny thing is, mm -hmm. once we create that, we'll have no idea we've created it. No, <laughs> no idea at all. It's just like, damn, this is no, cool. <laughs> nor will we be able to, pro prove, to prove it, I don't no, think. No, I, I don't think we'll ever be able to prove that AI is here. I think we'll always be thinking, because, oh, it's not really AI. Because the analogy I, I like to make, we like to make, is like, okay, this is the same as the way ants and bees work. Mm. You look at ants. Ants uh, operate on a chemical function and they build amazing ant farms, ant hills with like air conditioning ducts and all this crazy, yeah, like, incredible. massive architecture that, you know, obviously no single ant or even a group. If you got a hundred ants together and said, you know, how'd you make this? They're like, oh, I don't know, man. Yeah, <laughs> no idea. Whatever. And same with bees. Like, they have, and again, hive intelligence where each individual bee does its own little thing and via that you get collective intelligence which makes this amazing amazing complexity yeah and isn't That's that the same as us kind of a form of artificial intelligence there what everyone is actually yeah. saying is you won't be able to ever predict what the artificial intelligence will do because when you create ai you'll create better versions and better versions that's already happening right now. If you look at the Earth, you look at just technology as a single thing. You look at technology as the intelligence. The greater intelligence is already here. Yeah. Of course, we can't, can't already understand how, uh, how the technology works. And that's why we keep on pushing back what our definition of AI is. I mean, Watson, uh, what we just spoke about right then, that, that's, that's that AI. That is AI. That's AI. Yeah, nah, it's not AI. <laughs> but nah, no, we can push it back. And like Maya always think about the Turing test. It's broken all the time. You visit porn sites and like people pop up and start talking to you. Well, one side, it's probably good that we push it back. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's like, oh, that's AI. We don't need anymore. No. <laughs> don't need to push it back. Yeah. It's just such a mystical thing that we can't define intelligence. We can't define life, and we can't define AI. That's why I think we've pretty much already got it right now. You view the world as its individual technology yeah. as a single thing. That's your artificial intelligence. Yeah. That's the hive. That's the singular. Another thing I've, I've in a lot of arguments, people have had uh, a point with a point is um. Once you, if you connect all brains together, that isn't really AI, like an artificial intelligence. It's more, mm. oh, you're, it's just a whole bunch of humans connected together, thinking together. But then my point was like, okay, well, maybe after that, you know, the human will start turning us into an algorithm because yeah. we are very predictable creatures if you know enough about us. Yeah. If you have enough of the inputs and you know how the neural workings work, like going on, and you know the outputs, yeah. then you can basically turn us into an algorithm, which... Once it's got the algorithm, the perfect one, you just automate it. Done. Well, see, the, the, the first child that is born perfectly into the machine, and by perfectly into the machine, I mean everything the baby has coming into it is recorded and also shared on the machine. Yeah. So you've got the baby's DNA, it's grown there, and everything that happens to it is recorded onto the machine. That is the first, that, that's the beginning of the end of mankind. Because yeah. we're not needed after that, because then the machine can start you know, can replicating replicate it. Itself. It can... that, that'll grow exponentially. More and more babies will be born perfectly into the machine. And, well, see, then... at that point, all it has to do, why doesn't it just, you know, uh, breed babies artificially. Exactly. Exactly. Why would you need to breed them in flesh and blood? You just breed them in terms of. You algorithms. can actually, yeah, just do the, the brain so, there and have all the inputs coming in. And the, the, those algorithms would still do the exact same things as a you know human baby would do, hmm. but just you know far faster. You can speed it up. You can say, well, go faster. Yeah. Go faster. Go <laughs> Keep faster, on going. Faster. Yeah. What do you got for me? Interconnect. Exactly. Share ideas. Do stuff. <laughs> and the good thing yeah. is, we don't have to feed them there. We don't have to. This flesh and bone won't hold us back. We won't be. We won't need to eat food. No, well, we just want energy. Much. Yeah, lots of energy, and then yeah. we get into the far future about the sun and Dyson spheres and stuff. But yeah, we talked about that before. Anyway, I think that's a. That's pretty. I good. think we've covered, we've covered everything. a lot there. We started with the singularity in different schools, and we just went on a crazy yeah. tangent about our own ideas. So, hope you enjoyed the rant. It was good to actually talk about that. Was that was fun. <laughs> it was fun.
as and your own comments. Oh, on, please uh, do. Let... Hi, on Hive AI or yes, Hive AI. comments or... We'll be promoting that a little bit more as, as time goes on a bit. We're going to be uh, looking at different ways to do that. We haven't been too adventurous on there. But yeah. <laughs> we will. So There's been some be cool good. comments on there. There has lately, been. Though. It's been kind of cool, actually. I've yeah. liked one. We, we should actually do some of that, actually speaking. I like, I like, I like some of Tim Kennan's stuff. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're very laser fair, very the, nice. Yeah, the latest yeah. one was pretty cool. <laughs> Anyway, that's uh, yeah. been High 45 for this week in a week of February. The yeah. week of February. The week of February. Yeah. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. Catch you next week. See ya. Mm.